Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brianna and today's video, as you guys can tell, is going to be about teacher salary. So on a recent video, I got a comment asking how much do teachers make, are there benefits, and just what goes into teacher pay. Now it's no secret that teachers are not paid enough money. I'm a first year teacher and I've already seen the amount of work it goes into to educate kids and do all these other tasks behind the scenes. So I wanted to sit down and make a video talking about where teacher salary comes from, how much teachers make, and why I believe teachers need to be paid more. I am only going to be talking about public schools, so things like private and charter schools are going to be different, but for public schools, it typically comes down to how many years of experience and what school or school district you're at. It also can vary based on your degree level, so whether you have a bachelor's, a master's, or a doctorate degree. For public schools, teacher salary comes from the government or from taxpayers. This means that teachers are public employees, so their salary is public information. You can Google any school or school district and find out the exact dollar amount of how much a teacher makes. Normally, teachers, librarians, and nurses will make the same money based on their years of experience, and it doesn't vary from elementary to high school, so you'll make the same if you teach second grade, seventh grade, or twelfth grade. I get this question all the time of whether or not teachers are paid over the summer. So for most teachers, their contract is about 180 days, about 10 months of the school year. That salary is for that 10 months, but it's broken up into 12 different months of paychecks. So yes, we still get paid over the summer, but that's only our salary for 10 months, just broken apart to last the entire 12 months of the year. Teachers also receive other benefits like dental insurance, health insurance, and life insurance. So even though I am under 26 years old and I was able to stay on my parents' health insurance for a couple more years, I went ahead and just got my health insurance with my school district. Teachers are also able to qualify for federal student loan forgiveness. As you guys know, you have to have a degree to be a teacher, so most teachers do have student loan debt to pay back. However, most of these programs require 10 years of student loan payments until those loans can be forgiven. There are a few that you may be able to get forgiven sooner. For example, a Perkins loan, you may qualify for forgiveness after five years of teaching, but 120 monthly payments or 10 years is a long time to pay your student loans before they are forgiven. For me personally, I'm betting on just trying to pay them off myself because in 10 years, I do not want to still be paying these loans, or maybe Mr. Biden will make something happen with student loan forgiveness, but it's crazy that as a teacher, that is really the best option for paying off student loans. Okay, so now let's get into how much do teachers actually make. So I am not going to be sharing my personal salary because I just don't feel comfortable doing that, but I'm going to be breaking down major cities in Texas, which is where I teach, and how much the average teacher makes based on experience, and then after that, I'm also going to to look at some major cities across the United States to see how much are teachers actually making. So I did some research of a few different major cities in Texas and I'm going to share a couple of different numbers on their teacher pay scale. So the first one is going to be Houston ISD. As a brand new teacher with zero years of experience, they start at $54,369. Now, Houston ISD actually is a lot higher than some of the other cities in Texas that I've looked at. So after 20 years of teaching, you're making $63,708, which is not a lot of money after being in the classroom for 20 long years. After 30 years, you're making about $72,000, and 37 plus years, it caps off at $80,000. 37 plus years in the classroom is such an incredibly long time to just barely be breaking $80,000. So for Dallas ISD, a brand new teacher starts off at $56,500. After 10 years, you're at about $63,000. Now, Dallas ISD is a bit different than the other districts in Texas I've seen. They have what they call a teacher excellence initiative, which allows you to basically make more money depending on where you fall at in this scale. So they have progressing, proficient, exemplary, and master, and I'll insert a photo of what their chart looks like. But as a regular teacher working about 187 days a year, you can potentially make up to $100,000 if you're categorized as a master. 
but I didn't really dig much into what that entails, how long it takes to get there, but there is the opportunity to make up to that dollar amount. In Austin ISD, which I believe is one of the most expensive places in Texas to live, the housing is just ridiculous there and the market is insane. So a brand new teacher makes $51,000 after 30 plus years of teaching. You're only making a little bit over $63,000. Guys, that is so sad. Imagine you have a master's degree, you probably have more student loan debt than your salary after 30,000 years. So that is for Austin, Texas, the capital of Texas. And I'm gonna look at two more places. So Amarillo, if you've never heard of it, is in the upper north panhandle, pretty close to Oklahoma, kind of more of a middle of nowhere rural type of place. So Amarillo ISD starts you at $50,200 58 dollars after 35 plus years you're making a little bit over sixty nine thousand dollars so for amarillo on their website they do have a different scale for bachelor's degree versus masters so <laughs> get this guys if you have a bachelor's you start off at fifty thousand two fifty eight if you have a master's degree you start off at fifty thousand six five eight only a $400 difference for an extra degree. That is just crazy. And for a master's degree, after 35 years, you're only making $69,000. 829 so that's for Amarillo and the last place in Texas is Laredo ISD which is way down south close to the Texas Mexico border so for Laredo a brand new teacher starts off at 50,950 after 35 years you're making a little bit over 74,000 so as you guys can see the starting pay I would argue is pretty decent but after 15 20 30 years teachers are barely making over over $60,000, $70,000, which is crazy. I'm in my first year and I am so stressed and cannot imagine teaching for 30 plus years and only making that much money. So I do want to mention a really cool tool from the Texas Tribune. I'll link it down below, but they have a tool where you can type in any school, any school district and see the average teacher pay as well as a bunch of other info about the school. You can see their state accountability ranking, demographics about about students, about teachers, and so I'll leave that down below. If you're in Texas and you're curious, you can search up any school and see how much teachers are making. So stepping outside of Texas, I want to share a couple of other cities around America and how much teachers are making. So the first one is New York City and keep in mind the cost of living varies so much from Texas to New York to California. So keep in mind the cost of living as I'm going through and saying these different teachers salaries. So for New York City on their website, they said a brand new teacher with a bachelor's degree starts off at about $57,000. 845 that is very similar to Dallas ISD where the cost of living in Dallas is significantly lower than New York City New York and so for a master's degree you can start off at around $65,026 for a master's degree in New York City the cost of living compared to that salary is just ridiculous um, next is going to be Oklahoma City. So Oklahoma City was shocking at how low they pay their teachers. A brand new bachelor degree teacher is starting off at a whopping $34,000. That is very disheartening. After 22 plus years, you're at $50,000. So in Oklahoma City, it takes you 22 years to barely be making what teachers here in Texas on average are starting at. For a doctorate degree, so not a bachelor's, not a master's, a whole doctorate PhD degree in Oklahoma City, you will start off at $36,550. And after 22 years of teaching with that doctorate degree, you're making $53,925. For Miami on their website, I actually saw something I haven't seen, which is they actually have a cap. 
So most of these different school districts I've seen will kind of just say like a number plus, implying you will make at least that much money, but potentially more. On Miami-Dade's website, they had a minimum of a bachelor's degree, $47,500, and a maximum of 74,182. So they actually specified a maximum cap. And so after 18 years of teaching on their scale, it says 73,000 plus, but the plus only will go up to 74,000. So between 18 years, 28, 38, your maximum is going to be 74,182. So the last one that I'm going to talk about, which is also very ridiculous, is Los Angeles, California. According to a CNBC article from a couple of years ago, the average teacher was making between $44,000 and $86,000. That is a huge gap, but the lower end of $44,000 as a starting pay in Los Angeles is very, very low because as you guys are probably aware, that city is very expensive to live in. So I do wanna quickly just list off a couple of ways that teachers are able to get stipends or bonuses added on to their salary. One way could be coaching a sport, if you teach bilingual education or special education. Sometimes there are sign-on bonuses for new teachers whenever they're trying to hire new teachers on. If you have a master's degree related to the subject you're teaching, there are some schools that will give you a bonus or if you have a doctorate degree related to that subject, or in general, just a doctorate degree, may get you a bonus or a stipend. If you are a level or department lead, so like for my English One team, we have a level lead who basically oversees us and conducts our team meetings, you can possibly get a stipend or if you sponsor a club or do summer school, which I'm not too familiar with summer school, but I'm pretty sure you're going to get paid more for those extra hours of work. So now that we've gone through basically what entails teacher salary and how much teachers are making, I want to share with you guys what it's like being a teacher and why teachers are so severely underpaid. So contract hours are basically the hours that you're getting paid to work. Most teacher contracts are between between like 187, usually around there are the number of days that we're paid to work. Because again, we have weekends off, holidays and summers off. So when I say off, I'm being very sarcastic. And let me just say that I do not know a single teacher who only works during contract hours or who does not work whenever we are off. And so for me, for high school, my contract hours are Monday through Friday that we have school, 7.15 to 3.15 p.m. I personally have never only worked during my contract hours. It's just the work does not stop. You have to have time to prepare, to grade, to call parents, to do things. And it's impossible to only work during your contract hours. I spoke to a coach at my school who said that during football season, on average, every single week, he was working about 90 hours. That is way, way, way past his contract hours, but he had to do before school workouts, after school workouts, games, weekend traveling. And so most teachers, coaches, librarians, nurses are not only working during their contract hours that they are paid for. Now, whether I work 40 hours a week or I work 80 hours a week, my paychecks are going to be the same. For me, as an English teacher, I have on average 175 students. So last semester, I assigned an essay that took me probably at least minimum six hours to grade. So I did some math, and even if it only took me six hours to grade those essays for all 175 kids, that's only spending about two minutes to read and give feedback and grade each essay. So grading takes a huge amount of time as well as planning. Planning. So even when we have breaks, like let's say Thanksgiving break or winter break, yes, we have a week or two weeks off, but here is what we're doing over that time. After winter break, this semester ended and I spent hours and days finalizing grades, contacting failing students, contacting parents, doing remediation for students who failed and trying to prepare for next semester. So yes, there are a lot of holidays and days that we get off and yes, we only work work 
for about eight hours a day, but there are so many other hours of the day, of the week, the weekend that teachers are still working. One more thing is with virtual learning. So I have students who are in person and at home, but with virtual learning, it is nonstop. I will have parents and students emailing me at 11 p.m. Kids will turn in work at two in the morning. It honestly feels like sometimes work does not ever stop. Right now, I'm currently on a three-day weekend and it was just the end of a grading period. Yesterday, I had so many students emailing me and messaging me about grades that it was so overwhelming that I had to send out a mass announcement and say, hey guys, this is my weekend. I'm not going to respond until Tuesday when we get back from school. If you have questions, please read information on my Canvas page. So honestly, the amount of work and stress is just never ending. So I do want to add in that over the years, there have been a couple of teacher strikes. So in 2019, the Chicago teachers went on strike for 11 days. And over the last couple of years, the last several years, since 1969, Chicago Chicago teachers have gone on strike 11 times. Thousands of striking Chicago teachers converged on City Hall today. As new mayor Lori Lightfoot delivered her first budget, the teachers had their own spending priorities. The people of the city of Chicago demand funding and resources to go to the services of the city. For the fifth day, the strike canceled classes for more than 360,000 students in the country's third largest school district. The city and the Chicago Teachers Union are at odds over several issues, including higher salaries, smaller class sizes, and the union's demand for additional support staff. That same year in 2019, teachers in Los Angeles also went on strike for six days. It is ridiculous that teachers have to go to the point of going on strike to demand things like higher pay and smaller class sizes. And some of these strikes did result in small incremental bits of change, but overall teachers are still not getting paid enough. So after all of that, and I do want to end on a positive note, why should you become a teacher? So you know that teacher salary is incredibly low. You know that teaching is difficult, it's hard, it's stressful, why become a teacher? Well, obviously, we don't become teachers for money. If I wanted to make six figures, I promise you I would not have gone into teaching. The reason we teach is for the kids. The job sucks, like just being straight up, the job is very difficult and very stressful, but the students or the kids are what make every day worthwhile. It's what brings us into teaching is the students. And so teaching is very difficult and the pay is kind of subpar, but there are so many great benefits to teaching and it's so, so important for these kids to have great role models, especially if you are a person of color these students do not have enough black teachers, enough Hispanic teachers, enough Asian teachers. When I was growing up, I do not recall in public school, so from K through 12, ever having a black male teacher who was not a coach. Sit down and think about this for a second. How many black male teachers in K through 12 did you have? I did not have my first black male teacher until college and it was for a black history course. So if you are a person of color, a black man, a black woman, a Latina, Latino, it's so important to have more of us in the classroom to be there for these students who really need help and support. Some of them do not have parental figures at home. Some students are homeless, they're food insecure. Some students do not hear anything positive about them from home. They're told that they are not good enough, that they're stupid, that they're a failure. And so it's so, so important for these kids to have positive adult role models who they can confide in and get actual positive advice from. So I will end on this note that teaching is very difficult and I do believe teachers need to be paid more. 
but this job is so, so rewarding and it's just an amazing thing to be able to work with kids every single day. You never know what is going to happen and the things they say are so, so funny. So if you are thinking about becoming a teacher, do your research and know the different salaries for different areas you're looking at. Um, I hope this video was helpful. If you guys have any other questions, comment down below and I will link my teacher playlist down below if you guys want to follow me on my journey of my first year as a high school English teacher. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will catch you in my next video. Bye y'all. Okay, also I just have to point out that it is snowing in Texas for the second time in 2021, guys. Look at this. You guys cannot tell me that global warming is not hitting hard because it is snowing in Texas again.